Uh, put those kittens down. Is this the kitty party? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Daryl and Richard, professional uh, at being fat. I try. We're also musicians. We thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, where we came from. Um, mm. Our first band together was a band called Collaboratica, which went to crap real quick. But uh, the band after that was called Malstrom. And maybe I'll cut in some video to show you that hilarity. But, uh, we wrote some cool stuff um, back then, and what's funny is we wrote a song called Force of Nature that we actually still play to this day in Don Will Break. Yeah, we actually wrote that in a in a shed in your parents' backyard with the world's worst computer to record it and the little sound booth that was made out of plywood and a little window that you could just barely get in. But it was still somewhat of a recording studio. It was, it was the beginnings of what Forsyth was. Yeah, and if you wanted to play an acoustic guitar in that sound booth, unless you played like Fieldy from Corn, nope. Yeah. You had to, you had to <laughs> serenade the sky. Yeah. Just but <laughs> it was a start. It was a start. Um, we made a really crappy music video. I wish I had that, that one lying around. That's, that was terrible. Just terrible. No drummer. Our drummer was a keyboard for a while. We actually had a drummer in Malmstrom, but uh, we had some some really crap gear. I think back then I was playing through a PV amp that was like thirty watts or something. Thirty unstoppable watts. Yeah, and Daryl had this bass amp that was borrowed when we played over there. A little crate bass amp that I think he blew up. Oh, I know I blew it up. I remember that speaker just. I mean, it had more distortion than I can ever think. That was before I even knew mo most about speakers and electronics and everything. And, uh, Mike, if you're looking, I'm sorry. I know it was your aunt. You know, I was a douche, but hey, you know. To douche or not to douche? I'll give you an 18. I got plenty of those. <laughs> no. Uh, our PA back then was this, uh, hodgepodge of like house speakers and this really shitty Tosh PA that I think was 100 watts or something. It was maybe 200 on a good day when the wind was at its back. <laughs> yeah, no humidity in the air. It worked perfect. I mean, it was rusted. I, I think I got it at a pawn shop for 50 or 60 bucks. Um, Tosh. Yeah. It, it was terrible. And we knew nothing about homage, so I probably made that thing even worse because we hooked up probably seven or eight speakers that were just even we had speakers that were like this big trying to make them our PA we even had a speaker in a five gallon bucket just let it sit in there and that's so we tried to make it to a sub that was pretty funny a little while later I traded that um, I traded that Tosh PA for a badass PV uh, PV Vortex 2 it was a uh, PV's Randy Road style V that thing was killer the guy actually traded for me straight out and that Tosh sat on his shelf at that store for the next three to four years before I think they went under. But um, probably all my fault. I but I did hear that it's living a good life as a boat anchor somewhere <laughs> out in the Gulf. Uh, the best sound anchor ever. It's, tell it's me, great. Tell me about your first couple bass amps. Those are awesome. Yeah. Um, God. I mean, we've, I've, I've played through like some of his PV... Um, different little guitar amps thinking hey that was so cool and they had plenty of power and little did I know you know tone wasn't that great uh, starting up uh, uh, the, the ones that I do remember honestly is uh, is that Yamaha uh, 125 watt 15 watt Yamaha and uh, or not 15 watt 15 inch speaker that uh, we ended up buying and I think at a pawn shop I would believe it's at a pawn shop Cash America Palm. Yeah, Mobile Cash Highway. America Palm. Yeah, Mobile Highway. That's usually where a lot of the good stuff is. Um, the speaker was blown. And anyway, uh, went in there, took out the, that 15, and ended up putting in a 400 watt, 8 ohm, uh, I think it's 8 ohm or 4 ohm, but it was a PV Black Widow. And that was a bomb speaker. It actually was so powerful that it actually shook the whole cabinet apart. We had to reinforce it with different screws and everything 
Uh, it worked. Stretch. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it worked. It did. It did the job. It was very loud. It was the way it should have been. And then I ended up uh, getting rid of it and uh, selling it to a coworker of mine. Um, back when I was downsizing a lot of the equipment, and uh, I feel bad because that was actually a, a really good combo. Um, that Yamaha lasted real well. No problems with electronics. Yada yada. And then uh, the next one I remember I got from actually Chad Fox. Uh, the original bassist for Don will break um, back when uh, he was trying to transition into the guitarist uh, I stepped in to be the bassist um, he was wanting to do a part-time thing with Don will break and uh, became the guitarist uh, he ended up selling me the back the backline 600 Galen Kruger um, I think it's again yeah, I think it was Galen Kruger uh, backline 600 which was 300 watts at 8 ohms um, it had problems with the knobs. The electronics were all rusted out. The the pots were just terrible. I mean, you just turn up to two, and then all of a sudden you just shoot up to eight, and then come back down to one. You just you couldn't. It was unpredictable. You couldn't keep a thumb on where it was going to be. Um, I actually ended up giving that up to another band uh, because they had a bassist with no equipment, um, and I was going to go ahead and upgrade anyway. So I decided to give that amp. To them, we um, shall not speak their name yeah. though, because uh, they kind of douched on us hardcore. But um, I gave them a, a, a 115, um, and I believe a combo of a 115 and a 4 by 10. Did you um, get paid for that bass, or did he get the he get the bass? He gave the bass back. back. Yeah. We ended up donating that to uh, one of the benefits. I'm trying to think which one. I think it was a. Uh, an autism benefit, it could have been a cancer benefit, but either way, it went to one of those good benefits. Um, it was a, it was a blue Fender five string um, that I did have. Uh, it was a great, great bass. Uh, hated to get rid of it, but you know, hey, it was a good cause, and it went to the right people, from what I understand, and uh, I was really happy about that. But going, going even farther back, I, I, I forgot to mention how absolutely dirt poor we were. It wasn't that just we were uneducated about equipment. We were poor, yet we wanted to be musicians. And yeah. I guess, you know, I, I hear stories normally it seems to be musicians start to become musicians and then they become horribly poor uh, trying to pursue their dream. For us, it was the other way around. Our, we, we started poor and we still are not rich by any means, but we make a comfortable living now so we can get decent stuff. And we're smart enough to know where to find it for better prices, but... Uh, way back, we were so poor, we took an old nightstand. Like, it was like a little two-drawer nightstand. We took the drawers out. We built a little faceplate. We had these two real shitty, like, Radio Shack, I think, 12s. And we screwed them in there. And this thing was just dog crap. It was a cab we built. And, uh, yeah, that thing, I think, just rattled itself to, to hell. Yeah. You know, it didn't sound good at all, of course, because they were... Radio Shack subs that just produced, like, I think only about 60 hertz, and that was about it. That was about all the frequency response you really got from them. Yeah, I mean, I think they were mostly made for the people that do conference calls and or conference stuff and, you know, that sort of thing. But They were supposed to be car subwoofers, but, but they just didn't get low enough. In, in, all, in all fairness, though, at the time, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread that we got to, we got to do that, but... Uh, it was a it was a good journey. I remember when we uh, growing up, uh, uh, you know, he would stay over the night at the house when we were really young, uh, like seventeen, sixteen years old, and he'd be playing keyboard at night, uh, playing it through this little mic. Back when uh, the internet, the microphones were like you know, fifty bucks. And it was a very small little little crappy, computer crappy mic. mic and. It was on one of those gateways with the ME on it, and he was up all night coming up with a beat pattern on the Casio keyboard with the, the snare, the hi-hat, and everything. I wake up the next morning, and he's, he'd be like, yeah, man, hey, you got to check out this stuff that I did. And it to, At the time, it was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I hope none of those tracks ever reached the internet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you look back now, it's kind of tragic, but you know, at the time, it was it was the greatest thing ever. I mean, we we went through some stuff that was uh, pretty fun. I mean, we and going back to the point of being poor, yeah, we used to uh, like I used to give rides 
uh, to people at school just so I can get gas money to ride around to be able to go out and take equipment, put it in my 89 Ford Crown Victoria, completely load that up with, with all, everything we had and just go play somewhere. Um, we even went as far as to uh, go to the Waffle House there off of 98 in Blue Angel. And uh, we unloaded all our equipment. We had nowhere, you know, nowhere to play. And they had outlets in the back. They probably still do. Uh, we unloaded all our equipment, got a drum set, um, got all our, all our gear, including the PA, which was still the Tosh at the time, unloaded <laughs> and set up in the back of the Waffle House. And then we started to play. And probably about a minute or two into it, all of a sudden the back door opens and there's all these employees of Waffle House coming out. We're thinking, oh man, here they go. They're going to shut us down. No, they actually came out and watched and had fun. And then they went back in when people came by and they didn't shut us down. They said, you know, play till whenever. But eventually somebody down the way did complain about the noise and they, they said that they had to shut us down. Um, so we did get shut down, but it was fun. A lot more noise than music back then. Yeah, it was, a, it was just about having fun. That's the main thing. And it still is. That's mm-hmm. why we do it. We don't make money being musicians. I mean, we're in Pensacola, and you know, yeah. unless you spend all your time doing covers, you're not really going to make any money. And even then, it's really only a select few cover bands that have been around forever that make all the money. And that's all well and good. And I'm sure they have fun doing it. But you know, we're not too old yet. We like to get out there and and throw down hard and put everything we have into a show and be sore the next day. And now, I mean. You know, we, we've had for a few years now really good uh, guitar rigs, bass and, and guitar, but um, it's just been in this last little while that we really upgraded everything. Um, I have a Black Widow, not Black Widow, Blue Voodoo, Crate Blue Voodoo head that's uh, been upgraded, and it's got a cab I'm pushing. is a PV Valve King cab, but I have two Eminent Swamp Things and two Eminent Texas Heats in there. So it's a 4x12, but it's a 600 watt cab. So that cab can handle all kinds of volume. And, uh, you know, we went over Daryl's rig earlier in the video, and his, his rig is insane. And it's it's just, we're, we're ridiculously loud, and we finally have the PA now to match, because Mr. Jim Summers from the Vault fame, back whenever I ran sound for him, has had the, the PA for that extremely large 10,000 square foot venue sitting around in storage in this house and uh they finally let me come buy it from him so now uh now we have the the pa to match which is retarded because we just have a little jam room but we've always kind of been going you know wanted to go above and beyond we get out there and play and we got something to say we want people to hear it yeah we try and uh, we try and upgrade our stuff because not only do we want to be loud which a lot of people will agree we love to be loud. It's just, you know, it, we like to also sound good. You know, being loud is one aspect of it, but being, you know, clear and precise and uh, turning back to the camera is, is really what it's about, you know. And then and then you pull out a pink guitar and then start slapping there on the face with the broken string. But... Uh, yeah, it's uh, we 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 wanted to try and put something together to show what we do have, uh, to maybe try and help somebody that doesn't know much about it. Um, there are a lot of aspects when you choose uh, different parts of equipment to matching up the homage to the wattage, um, as well as decibel levels. How high can you go? Um, what kind of cabinets you need? Um, some some cabinets, if you're looking for bass, you want it to be a thick, fat speaker cabinet um and again a lot of stuff we try and figure out just over experience um but uh you know it's just we we became self-taught on everything we really have no formal training on any of the electronics um any of that but you know just pick up a book read it you uh watch youtube video uh just do some research on different things and you'll see, you know, I mean, you can ma- mix and match and get the right tones that you want and, and uh, go from there. Um, I really like the eminent speakers he has in there. Um, I actually have another combo that's a 1x12 um, Fender, Fender, 
Fender amp, I forgot what it's called, but nonetheless, it has an eminence in it, and it's a 1x12, and uh, that thing can handle some power. You can be on 10 and not shake um, the speaker too much. Point is, we come from nothing. We're not famous, but we're well known. We love what we do. We love to see other people. We love what they do out there doing it. And uh, we will help you if you need it. We will help you. If we can come out and film your band, we'll do it. You know, If we can get some, some promotion for you, we'll do it. If you need some graphics done, we'll do it. I'd love to say I could record your band, but unfortunately right now I don't have the space to do that. But, you know, we've we've lent people equipment and we've we've helped people get stuff. I mean, if you guys need anything, let us know. We can fix just about anything because everything we've ever had has been used and broken. So yeah. we've always figured out how to make it work one way or yeah. another. Basically, trial by error is really what a lot of, a lot of it comes down to is obviously don't use a five-gallon jug for a speaker cabinet. See um, that right there? We're about to lose the camera. Oh, crap. Well, thanks, guys. All right. Peace out. This segment brought to you by iCarly. Oh, the only Carly that you need. Yeah, you Carly sucks. iCarly's off. <laughs> what about a Carly? Or Doug Carly? This is Forsyth signing off. And apparently a big cat. <laughs> the first time. It was just a wee baby cat.